Hello guys. So here's a continuation of um, the Putza algorithm. Uh, in this uh, lecture, I want to just look at a second example of how you apply the algorithm to find a matrix exponential or to solve a system of equations. So here we have a um, system, uh, three by three, uh, one, which is given by this. Uh, we want to solve it, okay? So uh, what you do is you go straight away straight away to find um, the eigenvalues, so a minus lambda i equals zero. So these should be straight lines here, okay? It's not a matrix. You are computing the, that determinant, right? So when you do that, you get this equation, which gives you lambda one, lambda two to be two, and you have a lambda three, which is equal to, equal to three, all right? Uh, now, you, uh, you have to be careful um, how, how you choose this. It, actually, it doesn't matter how you name them, but you have to be consistent throughout in your solution, all right? So you could have said lambda one is two, lambda three, um, I mean lambda two is three, and then lambda three is two. You could have, you could have done it that way. But when you go to computing um, the piece, you make sure that um, the lambda one and two and three are consistent with how you have named them here. So consistency, consistency is very important. So here we chose lambda one and lambda two to be two and lambda three to be three, okay? Um, the formula for co computing the matrix exponential by the Putzer algorithm is given by this. K is running from zero to two. Um, um, they have product of the P's and, and M. So if you expand this, you get P1 times M0 plus P2 times M1 plus P3, P3 times M2. Okay, so what you do once again is co uh, calculate what your M's are, M0, M1, M2. Find what your P's are, P1, P2, P3. Plug them in here, group your terms, and that gives you the matrix exponential. All right? Uh, M0 is straightforward, it's just the identity matrix. M1 is A minus lambda 1 times I. If you uh, solve this out, you get this matrix, right? M2 would be the product of the term with lambda 1 and then the term with lambda 2. Okay? So, if all right. If we had said, you know, um, lambda lambda two was three, then I mean, you, you see how the naming becomes important. You you, could, you can do it that way, but again, you have to make sure that you are consistent throughout. All right. So here, lambda one and lambda two are two. So you just plug them here, multiply these out. These two matrices, and you get that. So you have m naught, you have m one you know M2, which is given by this. So that's cool. Um, what we need to find is to compute what the P's are. And you get the P's from solving the initial value problem, uh, which is given by this, right? So solve this initial value problem, P1 prime, P2 prime, P3 prime is equal to, then you have to set up this matrix where uh, the consistency in how you name your lambdas becomes important. So our lambda one was two, our lambda two is two, our lambda three is three. Below the main diagonal, you have one, and then zero, you have one, and then zeros up here. Multiply the P by the P's, and then this is your initial condition, which is always like this. The first one is one, and the rest are zeros. So from here, you get three equations, three initial value problems, and you need to solve them sequentially from, you know, from the first one to the final one. So solve this one. To get P1, once you have P1, you plug it into the second one, solve for P2. Once you have P2, plug it into the third one and solve for P3. That gives you your P1, P2, and P3. So if you solve for P1, it's easy. So you get e to the 2t, all right? You can do that by uh, separating the variables. Once you have P1, we plug it into the second equation, this equation. We know what P1 is, is e to the 2t plus 2p2, and the initial condition for this equation is p2 at zero is zero. So we can solve this um, equation. That gives us this, right? You compute the, uh, again, the integrating factor, and then manipulate it, you get that. Um, solve this out, that gives you p2 is equal to this. Apply the initial condition, you know that, you see that c equals zero. And then p2 will be t e to the 
to T. So we know P1, we have solved for P2. So we move on to the third equation where we just plug P2 into the third equation. We know P2, so put it there, and that gives you this equation, right? Again, the initial condition for P3 at 0 is equal to 0. Okay, so we can solve this using uh, the fact that this is you know, a linear um, first order equation, find integrating factor again and solve it. We use the initial condition and boom, you have P3. Okay, so we have, we have P1, we have P2, we have P3, you take, and then we know M0, M1, and M2, plug them into the equation star star, and you get this long uh, expression here. All right, um, most of these terms here are zero, so it's easy to compile, um, put this together, so sum these, and then if you sum all of that, you get the matrix exponential, which is given by this matrix, okay? So um, the Putzer algorithm approach is quite straightforward. Um, as I mentioned before, most textbooks will just go straight away to this Putzer algorithm uh, when they want to compute the matrix exponential. So it's quite powerful. Uh, but once again, you have to be uh, careful how you, um, how you arrange your eigenvalues, uh, eigenvectors, all right? So once we have the matrix exponential, we can solve for the solution which is just equal to the matrix exponential times a constant uh, vector. So take this multiply by vector, and then that gives you this expression here for the solution to the system. So we have a solution to um, the system, all right? Good. I have uh, these exercises here that you can try your hands on. Uh, I'll let you submit uh, two of them, all right? So in this one, you will find that the eigenvalues are real. Uh, the eigenvalues are real for this question, uh, exercise 2 as well, but in this case it's 3 by 3. Uh, in question 3, you have multiple eigenvalues, like the first problem we solved, that is this one. And the fourth one has complex eigenvalues, all right, which is given by this. Um, you, can find, you can find an example of complex eigenvalues in one of the text reference textbooks, okay? Um, I think the one by Kelly, the book by Kelly has an example of a complex eigenvalues. I mean, you can you can look at that if you want. But I'll I'll um I'll set up an exercise for you homework to try to submit exercise two and ex exercise four. Okay, so that will be um that will be it for matrix exponentials. Okay, so I'll come your way again and we'll move to the last bit of uh, our course outline, which is the nonlinear uh, stuff. So see you later.